Hi guys, what's up? It's Hila here, uh, House of Hila. I just finished watching Outlander, the penultimate um, episode, episode 11 of 12. And I got feels, and as usual, when I have feels about an Outlander episode, I have to talk about them. Okay, so first of all, whew, I feel like I've been on a roller coaster. I seriously feel like this has been the second best episode this entire season um, next to the one where Met or Meta dies. So yeah, uh, spoiler alert, there's going to be a lot of spoilers and I'm talking a lot about what happens in the books and what happens in the TV show because I love the books and I've read the books like about five times. I I recently finished re-reading a book, book five, uh, The Fairy Cross, uh, a couple of days ago, actually. So it was quite nice seeing some of the scenes that they decided to pick from that book and put into the episode. Okay, so um, right off the bat, we they moved forward um, the knowledge that Jemmy can travel through the stones. And so I was just like, oh my gosh, that, that came to me out of the left side. I was not expecting that because in the books, they don't make that decision until... Much, much, much later, uh, basically, and it's after Brianna actually has their second child, a daughter. And so that was like, whoa, I wasn't prepared for that. I'm not ready to see Jamie have to suffer through saying goodbye to Brianna again because he knows what it means when people travel through the stones. He had to spend a whole 20 years away from Claire and he never thought that he was going to see her again. So he's absolutely certain that he's never going to see his daughter again or indeed his uh, grandson. And it just feels like this season has just had huge losses, huge huge losses for Jamie um, and I wasn't prepared for that and yeah so so there was that and then you had all of the emotion where you saw Brianna saying goodbye to the people on the ridge which was quite interesting because we didn't see a lot of Roger actually saying goodbye and that's quite indicative of the relationships that Brianna had uh, formed in the ridge and obviously she had been on the ridge a heck of a lot longer than Roger because Roger was with the Mohawks for the most part so he didn't seem to have formed any uh, close relationships with people. Uh, the saddest one for me was when she was saying goodbye to Lizzie because Lizzie was like no I'm meant to be with you you know she she's like um, she didn't want to say goodbye to Brianna, which was a really nice touch because in the books, not a lot is mentioned about Brianna parting from Lizzie. In fact, for the most part, Brianna, is, um, she treats Lizzie as a very annoying, kind of like irritating person. Whereas in the TV show, they have uh, created a more evolved relationship, uh, so to speak. And even when Brianna was saying goodbye to Marcelli, I surprisingly found myself going quite emotional because the character of Marcelli, I love what the TV show has done with it. They have grown her so much. They've given her character development. She is nuanced. She's got flaws. She's, you know, they made me care about her, whereas in the books, not so much. So I found myself actually quite... Um, Heartbroken about that. But the episode itself is called Journey Cake, which is a reference to peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that Claire ate when she went back to find um, Jamie. And that's actually from book three. And I thought that that was a nice thing. I loved the visualization at the beginning where they're showing Claire in Edinburgh in her gray coat and she'd wrapped the uh, PBJ in a clink film. And it's they realized it exactly the way that it's described in the book, how she just lets it float into um, the humdrum of um of Edinburgh. And I thought that was like a really fantastic thing. And I love it when the filmmakers do that, when they give us, the readers of the books, the Easter eggs, wherein they faithfully stick to exactly what a scene would have looked like, even if it's just a brief glimpse into the books. I love that. Although if you haven't read the books, you'll obviously miss out on it, but it is a fantastic thing. Okay, so we have that. And then we also have um, John Gray turning up, uh, saying goodbye, because he has to go back to London. And he also brings um, an updated picture of William, who's Jamie's son. And what I really love about what the TV uh, show did with 
this is that they had Jamie tell Brianna before she leaves for the stones that she in, does in fact have a brother. And I thought that was really wonderful and well thought out in the way the scene was delivered. I could feel Brianna's pain at realizing that, you know, she's choosing to go to the future for the safety of her child. But at the same time, she's going to say goodbye to the possibility of, you know, this, uh, a brother, um, you know, her mother, her father and her son growing up with grandparents. And throughout this, I kind of felt like she was only doing it for Roger, which kind of made me like Roger a little bit less in my estimation. And also, Brianna has been growing so much on me, and especially with last week's episode where she was dealing with being captured by uh, Stephen Bonnet and how she called bloodedly shot him dead when he was supposed to be drowning. I thought that was... Um, that showed some character development. I don't think that uh, two seasons ago when we first met Brianna, she would have been able to do that. And I do like that you can see the character developing and growing. Okay, so, and then we have uh, them saying goodbye to Ian and they, they are hints, a little bit of hints to Ian's trauma because uh, there's a point in which he's begging Claire to take him through the stone so that he can go back into the past to fix something between a man and a woman. So it's kind of like, ooh, what happened there? I mean, I know what happened in the books, but I, I love the fact that the TV shows are kind of going their own way. Um, yeah, so, so that was really quite good. And then uh, Roger also asks Ian to be the one that takes them to the stone circle that they have to cross over because Brianna has said that she wouldn't have the courage to say goodbye to her parents. Another good touch. So Ian is the one that actually takes them uh, there. And they also spent a bit of time on the journal that Ian has, which was written by a fellow time traveler who had come back to the past to try and stop the massacre of the Native Americans by um, the settlers that would come to America. And so he now knows he's in on the secret um, of uh, their uh, the fact that they're time travelers. So there was a whole theme of secrets being revealed in this entire episode because you also had Jamie telling Brianna about his son and then Brianna finding out that, oh, her mom also knew about William, but she hadn't told him. But yeah, it's all the... And um, Claire and Brianna... Um, keep on avoiding each other because they want, don't want to say goodbye and it's just right up until the last moment that they do decide to, you know, say goodbye. And it's a very touching moment. Uh, Claire asks them to make some portraits for them to be able to remember. And it was really cool. And going to the stones, um, Roger and Brianna, they do go through the stones. And I didn't think that we were going to be shown what would be on the other side of them. I literally thought that this was you know, that was going to be the last time we saw them, but they actually showed us what happens on the other, a little bit of what happens on the other side. And, you know, you've got Roger saying, what the bloody, thing? you know, <laughs> um, which makes me think that the, you know, the TV show is up to something. Possibly they didn't end up in the time that they wanted to go to, or they've just gone back to um, Fraser's Ridge. I don't know. I'm not sure how to think about it. I think it's very possible that they've just gone back to Fraser's Ridge because Brianna really didn't have her heart set on going back to the future, going to the future or back to the future or something like that. So I thought that that was quite interesting. But more disturbingly, we've got the Browns brothers, who are the possibly the most despicable characters um, in this season. In terms of characters, I think that they are really well written. There's almost a moment of redemption where one of the Brown brothers um, says, you know, would you judge a father for trying to... Um, something like for trying to regain the honour of his daughter... And that really resonated with Claire because, of course, in the previous season, uh, sorry, previous episode, Jamie, um, Jamie, her and Roger had gone out to try and kill Stephen Bonnet for what he did to Brianna. So it was kind of like, oh, there's a moment of redemption there. And one thing that Outlander does really well is they just don't give you a cut and paste out two dimensional villain. You know, the, they are flawed and, you know, they are you can you, you almost think that they might be given an opportunity for redemption so with this guy it was kind of like oh okay he was a bit of a douche when he destroyed the needle and he's just been a douche but maybe there is actually some commonalities right but then he comes back with his new with his new wife who actually says that she's uh, refusing to have relations with him because she doesn't want to get pregnant 
And this is one of the weaker points of the episode because I'm not sure that a woman from the 18th century at that time would have told her husband that she doesn't want to have relations with him because she read it in a newspaper that, um, you know, she doesn't want to get pregnant. I just don't see how that would have been possible um, at all. Because he then sees uh, Dr. Rowling's um, case book in Claire's surgery and he puts two and two together and realizes that Dr. Rowling's the guy, the person who's been publishing all of these um, advice to women about how to stop getting pregnant naturally by using the, the rhythm method. And he figures out that that's Claire, which, again, I think was a huge leap for him to make uh, from just seeing a piece of equipment that, say, Dr. Rawlings to assuming that it is Claire. Um, So I do feel like that was one of the weaker parts um, of the episode itself, because then towards the end of the episode, he comes with his committee of protection and they kidnap uh, Claire. And I know what's going to happen. I'm really gutted about what's going to happen um, because it happens in the books and it's quite it's quite terrible. And I don't want to talk about it. And I'm almost dreading next week's episode because I know that they have to deal with that. And Outlander, the TV show, has never shied away from dealing with the uncomfortable aspects of the books because for me, that was one of the worst bits that I had to read through on the books. And I think the first three times I read the books, I sort of quickly skimmed over because I was very uncomfortable. And it wasn't until the fourth time that I sort of made myself read um, through it. So I'm not looking forward to episode 12. And at the same time, I am because I want to see how they handle that. Anyway, that does me. Um, so, yeah, so I feel a lot of feels. I feel like there were some roller coaster moments in there for me, especially with having to say goodbye to Brianna and Roger and uh, Jamie, and then also having been exposed to the pain that Ian, young Ian, is obviously feeling, and then closing off on Claire being kidnapped like that. It's, yeah, it's a lot to take in. Anyway, that is my assessment of. Um, Outlander, my thoughts on that. Overall, a really great episode. So far, it's number two after the one where in Meta dies. Thank you so much. I hope you subscribe for random vlogging stuff here on House of Hila. Bye.